Welcome to this time on this Good Friday afternoon as we follow the footsteps of Jesus to Golgotha to watch and wait in the company of the women and the disciple whom Jesus loved. We shall hear music, see images and Mike will share some brief scripture passages and we shall meditate on what it might have been like to be there at the foot of the cross on this most poignant of days. And our service will continue unannounced.
Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. What would we see? What would we see if we were there when Jesus was crucified? In the sombre half gloom, that darkness the Gospels describe. Jesus Christ would hang from a rough cross. Not a shining cross of silver or gold, but a stark cross of rugged, splintered wood. Our eyes would see a man dying, slowly, without relief, a crucified man, his body wrenched by pain, a sight not easy to look at. What would we hear if we were there when Jesus was crucified? The harsh thud of nails driven through wood and flesh, the moaning of the dying, the periodic insults shouted to the cross, the mockery of his enemies to his claim of divine sonship, the heart-wrenching sobs of his mother, the few gasping words of Jesus himself. Sounds not pleasant to the human ear. Only faith tells us there is something more about the crucifixion of Jesus. In that unlikely place, in pain and in sorrow, God showed love for a sinful world. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Through the soldier's eyes. How can a man dying like this think about others? How can he think about his mother's future when life is ebbing away from him? Why worry about a friend like this? It makes me wonder who will worry about me when I can soldier no longer. Who will care about me? Who will worry about my future? I know there's a pension, but who will care like this man cares? I've got friends in the army now, but what about when all that ends? With no army, to keep us together, what then? Will anyone care? This man's got friends prepared to wait, to stay with him in a place like this. Why do I feel this Jesus is speaking to me? That he's saying things far more important than any I've heard before. Why do I think his words have a meaning 
which goes far beyond the here and now. As they nailed him down, I thought, what a waste of a young life. Now he's about to die, and I see his friends. I know there is no waste. He's too serene for that. But what about me? What does he see when he looks at me? What would I see if I looked through his eyes? What could this mother of his teach me? What could this friend of his show me? He loves them. They love him. Who loves me? We now have a time of quiet prayer. A time when I invite you to symbolically bring to the foot of the cross stones to represent the wrongs that we have done to others where we have caused hurt. Nails to represent the wrongs done to us where we have been hurt. Candles, which may be lit as a symbol of our compassion for people or situations which God has laid on our hearts. But first, a few moments of quiet reflection. Let's listen now to a song that speaks of the place of forgiving, forgiveness and compassion. I know a place, a wonderful place. Yeah. 
gave us life again. A prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for your promised forgiveness, so freely given and yet so costly. We ask that where we have been hurt, you would help us to forgive as we have been forgiven. In faith, we commend to your care those people and situations that you have laid on our hearts in the knowledge that you love and care far more than we ever could. Fill us with your love and compassion, we pray. Amen. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within. Refreshment. The cross brings a special comfort. In striking words, St. Teresa of Avila sees the passion of Jesus as the place where he fulfills his promise. Come to me all you who find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. She encourages us to turn our eyes to him in his passion. And she says, he will turn to you with kindly and compassionate eyes, and forgetting his own sorrow, he will console you because you go to him. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. It is finished, that's what he said. But what does he mean? What's finished? Is it the searing pain? Is it the sneering of the onlookers? Is it the tears of his mother? Is it just an act of resignation? No, it seems to go beyond all that. It's as if there's been some great plan, some job he had to finish, and now he had. This was no cry of pain, no act of defiance to the onlookers, no word of comfort to his mother. No, this was a shout of triumph. It is finished. 
this man has achieved something great. Of that there is no doubt. But why do I feel it has something to do with me? The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For me, a sinner for a king, offering your death and suffering my sin, and I will give my life to you, Lord. For with grace you came to pay. Now, it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down.
at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The long dark day, Christ of the Abyss. What happened on that Saturday? The Sabbath, a day of rest, a day to revive the spirit, a day to set aside all worldly cares and commune with your Abba, Father. But not that Sabbath, because just the day before, he turned his back on you, his precious son. Because just the day before, you had clothed yourself in the filthy rags of my sin, such that your Abba, Father, could no longer even bear to look at you. So on that Sabbath, far from resting, far from reviving the spirit, far from communing with your Abba, Father, you were banished to the abyss, to the bleak depths of hell itself. Never can I shout at you, you have no idea, because you have been there. You have sunk lower than I could ever sink. And yet, from the depths of the abyss, you stand with arms outstretched to your Abba Father. And for love of you, he turns to you again. He reaches down. He gently strips away the filthy rags. And he raises you, his precious son, up to glorious day to commune with him again. Where could I go to escape your spirit? Even if I make my bed in the depths of Sheol, you are there. Your right hand will hold me fast, Abba, Father. A final prayer of blessing. O oh God, as on this solemn day, we bow at the foot of the cross. May the love that was manifested there stream into our hearts, challenging and subduing them and winning from us that response, which is thy will for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>